Tonight on Connecticut's news station, a late night shooting in New Haven leaves a woman critically injured and the father of her children dead. We're unpacking everything we know so far. And a street takeover leaves one officer injured and at least two men arrested. We have video of the chaotic scene and how police are responding. A historic storm has arrived in Southern California and residents are bracing for a system they have not seen in decades. We have the latest. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight in New Haven after a woman was critically injured and the father of her children was killed in a late night shooting. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carmen Chow. The shooting all came after the woman made a call to 911 to report a domestic dispute with the man just hours earlier. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner joins us from Elm City tonight with more on this developing story. DeAndrea, what can you tell us? But Carmen, police tell me that they were called to that home around 1125 last night. And after that call, they established a safety plan with the woman. But not even three hours later were they called back to that same home. But this time for shots fired. This really got to stop this violence. Lynette Hines was walking to church Sunday morning when she saw that her regular route was now a crime scene. Like, what's going on? Did I see the tape? was taped off and stuff and then I seen the cops out there. I was like, I ain't know what was going on until I came around came around through the bike trail and stuff. The 200 block of Shelton Avenue turning into this crime scene around 2.30 on Sunday morning when officers were called to a home for reports of shots fired. Police say they found 54 year old Christopher Garvin and an unnamed 54 year old woman suffering from gunshot wounds. Garvin died of his injuries while the woman is still fighting for her life in critical condition. You gotta pray for her. She, she makes it. According to the police, this wasn't the first time they had been called to the residence in a matter of hours. Police say they were at the home to investigate a domestic dispute around 1125 Saturday night. They say they spoke to the woman victim who says that she was in a physical altercation with her children's father, Garvin. Police also say they tried to unsuccessfully locate Garvin after the initial call and established a safety plan for the woman. Experts say that a safety plan is a set of actions that can help lower your risk of being hurt by your partner. What the officer does is that they look at the situation and see is this could this be a possible lethality? Is there high risk enough within this domestic dispute? And if there is, they'll do that um, application and then they'll try to connect the client with a domestic violence counselor to speak with. While police have not said if this was a domestic homicide, experts say that people are five times more likely to die in a domestic murder when a gun is involved. This latest incident leaving people like Hines hoping for change. This really got to stop this violence. Now, police, again, they have not released if this was an attempted murder, suicide, or if both of the victims shot at each other. And I also reached out police to police to see if they would release the specific safety plan, and they told me that they do not release details of victims' safety plans. In New Haven, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, DeAndrea. Staying in Elm City, where another shooting sent a man to the hospital yesterday. It happened on River Street near its intersection with Ferry Street. Police responded at 3.30 in the morning, finding a man in the road with a gunshot wound. That man says another person wearing a ski mask approached and shot him. He is expected to be okay, and police are still investigating. A massive investigation is currently underway in West Haven after police and witnesses reported a street takeover on Woodmont Road. Take a look at this video. Police say it was a sea of illegal dirt bikes, ATVs and cars on Morgan Lane. Police also say they have arrested two men after they crashed their dirt bikes. One of those men hurt an officer while resisting arrest and was found to be carrying a loaded pistol. The story is still developing and we'll bring you updates as soon as we have them.
And the capital city, a serious car crash at the corner of Tower Avenue and Waverly Street sent a woman to the hospital last night. Fire officials say they responded just before 3 a.m. and found two cars had collided with each other. A woman was semi-conscious outside of her car and was seriously injured. She was transported to the hospital and no word on her condition tonight. The other driver was not injured. Turning now to the weather watch, a great way to end out the weekend with plenty of sunshine and warmer temperatures today. But will it stay warm like this over the next few days? Here's meteorologist Sam Sampiri with that answer. Hey, Sam. It is going to stay warm one more day and then a touch of fall for the middle of the week. Good evening, everyone. What a beautiful day. You know, this summer, hard to come by. The last time it was like this, it seems to me, was Memorial Day weekend. It has been one uh, record wet summer so far, especially July. 85 for the high in Hartford, 83 New Haven. Right now we have clear skies across the area. Here's our cold front for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And actually, I wouldn't even call, call it rain tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. It's really going to be more about the chance uh, for a scattered shower. Meanwhile, temperatures are in the 60s uh, now and lower 70s. A little bit warmer and a little bit more humidity now creeping up along the shoreline. So yes, it is going to be a bit more humid for your Monday. So overnight, temperatures will hold in the 60s, basically 60 to 65 under a mostly clear to partly cloudy night. And tomorrow, we're going to increase that humidity into the 60s to near 70s. So that's why when that cold front approaches, we have the chance for a scattered afternoon shower or storm. Notice the icons are dry, but I can't rule out the chance for a couple of showers or maybe even an isolated thunderstorm. Temperatures getting into the mid 80s. Sun going down this evening at 7 42 or I should say tomorrow evening and let me get out of the way and show you when the sun comes up tomorrow morning 605 a nice start again 80s chance for a shower I'll time it out in more detail for you and I'll let you know what you can expect this week and we'll talk about the touch of fall we'll talk about uh, Hillary out in California and the tropics very busy in the Atlantic and we'll talk about the potential for some of those storms as well Carmen Sam, thank you. We have an update on the plane that made the emergency landing last night in Preston after officials called it an accident involving a small single engine airplane. Here's a look at the scene where the plane came down yesterday. Officials say the grassy field was right off of Route 12. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. It's unclear why the plane had to land, how many people were on board or where the plane was flying to. Officials are still investigating. Today, all Block Island ferries are running as scheduled after a large fire broke out at the Harbor Side Inn on Water Street yesterday. The fire left Block Island in an active state of emergency with limited water and no power in town. Crews from multiple agencies worked to put the flames out, which took them more than six hours. The Chamber of Commerce says all reservations with the ferry made between the 18th and 24th will be canceled and fully refunded. Tomorrow, we'll finally get some answers as to whether a tornado touched down in Windham County early Friday morning. Regardless of the National Weather Service's determination, the community in Scotland is still reeling after heavy rain and strong winds toppled trees and caused damage around people's homes. Surveyors say whatever went through town certainly can be categorized as severe. We did see up there was, you know, some pretty good indicators that um, if, if not a tornado, some very severe winds went through that area. I felt the house shake. I thought things were hitting it or the vines were ripping off. I didn't know what was going on, but I could feel the house shake. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. If a tornado is confirmed, it will be the fifth to come out of Friday's storm system in New England. It's not just supplies parents and students are looking for with back to school shopping in full swing. Getting a good deal is also on the list this year with inflation still taking a toll on wallets. Among the deals to take advantage of Connecticut's sales tax free week, which starts today. Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro breaks down the ways you can save. A sign of the season. Shopping baskets full of back to school essentials. I'm ready for the kids to go back. But it's really stressful because there's a lot of um, stuff to get ready for them. Also in the mix this year, inflation. 
everything's expensive right now. Something that used to be maybe $10 before is like $20 now, especially for like the uniform dresses, they're like expensive. According to a report from Deloitte, parents across all income groups plan to pull back on back to school shopping this year, with total spend dropping 10% year over year. Shoppers surveyed say the focus is on necessities like school supplies while holding off on non-essential buys like tech and clothes. We have to cut back on a lot of stuff. We are trying to reuse some of the things we had from last year. Oh, I'm always looking for a deal. Enter Connecticut's sales tax free week, during which eligible clothing and footwear priced under $100 are exempt from the state's 6.35% sales tax. Some of the items on the list, shirts, dresses, jeans, work clothes, sneakers, and diapers. I'm going to take full advantage of that. Everything is taxed in Connecticut, so every little break we get is good. Sales tax free week runs until Saturday, August 26th. Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Angelo. If you want the full list of everything you can buy with no state tax this week, download the free Fox 61 News app by scanning the QR code on your screen there, and you can find everything you need to know about back-to-school shopping. And with the new school year getting underway, we're already seeing a spike in respiratory illnesses and other viruses. The CDC now reporting an uptick in RSV cases nationwide, likely driven by kids returning to classrooms. Doctors are now urging people to return to those familiar mitigation strategies such as hand washing. And the CDC recommends all infants get the new RSV vaccine, which can lessen the severity of the symptoms. If it gets down into the, their lungs, then it makes them require oxygen and they're in the hospital for several days. Another illness on the rise, human metanumovirus or HMPV, and doctors say they're also seeing more cases of strep throat. And doctors are reminding parents to make sure their child's yearly vaccinations are all in order before the school year officially kicks in. Ahead of the start of the school year, districts across Connecticut say they don't have enough staff. Shortage areas identified by the state include special education, math, science, history, bilingual education, and technology education. Education leaders say there are hundreds of teachers and paraprofessional staff openings ahead of the school year. Among the factors driving the shortage, burnout, retirements, people leaving the profession, and salary. When we want to acknowledge this crisis, it means taking bold and decisive action to, to do things differently, to pay our teachers what they deserve, to put policies in place that allow for us to have access to the schooling we need to do the work well, to diversify our profession. Tomorrow on the Fox 61 Morning News, we take a closer look at what's being done at the local, state, and federal level to address Connecticut's teacher shortage. It's all part of our back-to-school coverage all week long on The Morning Show. We hope you'll join us.